Welcome to you all. My name is Benjamin Ferenz, and I want to express my appreciation first to Professors Niels Blocker and Robert Hange for inviting me to exchange some views with this important conference, which is now taking place uh, in Leiden. Let me explain that I have been at this for a very long time. I was a student at the Harvard Law School um, when the war broke out in World War II. I enlisted. I fought in every major battle of the war. I saw the concentration camps while the crematoria was still burning as we liberated the victims who were there. So that the need for international humanitarian law was impressed upon me very dramatically at quite an early age. As a result of that experience, uh, as a war crimes investigator attached to General Patton's headquarters, an assignment that he had to set up trials of war criminals. Uh, as a result of that experience, uh, I have pretty much dedicated the rest of my life to trying to prevent that from happening again. I was employed by the Pentagon to go back to Germany after the war and assist in the subsequent Nuremberg trials following the International Military Tribunal. I became the chief prosecutor in a case which was undoubtedly the biggest murder trial in human history. It was known as the Einsatzgruppen case from the name Einsatzgruppen, which is the German term meaning nothing particular, action groups. I accused 22 defendants of murdering in cold blood over a million people. Women and children included, shot one shot at a time. The victims were executed because they didn't share the race or the religion or the ideology of their executioners. I thought that was a horrible thing, and I still do. And I've been trying to change that through a rule of law, primarily, uh, to prevent it from happening again. But unfortunately, as you know, it is happening again, again and again and again as we speak. Despite the slogan, never again, it's ever again is more likely to be more accurate. So what can we do about it? You're having an important conference. Well, the conference is dealing with international humanitarian law. What is international humanitarian law? It didn't exist. When I went to school, I knew René Cassin, who got the Nobel Prize for uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. If you have international universal rights, surely you should have some universal courts to deal with it. But we had none. We had the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg, which folded up and left after the trial of Hermann Goering, who committed suicide, and some of the other defendants. And after that, there was a big gap when I was working very hard to try to uh, create a new International Criminal Court. The goal which I had set for myself uh, at Nuremberg was to create a world in which all human beings could live in peace and dignity, regardless of their race or creed. That was my goal then. I was 27 years old and it was my first case. Because of my work in trying to create a permanent International Criminal Court, which as you know, exists today in The Hague, the International Criminal Court, I was invited by the Chief Prosecutor Marino Ocampo of Argentina to come to The Hague and make the closing presentation for the prosecution, which I did. I then repeated again, plea of humanity to law. I was then 92 years old. I am now in my 97th year. Uh, what have I learned? I have learned that it's enormously difficult, but I've also learned that progress is possible, and we do have progress. As I've indicated, I never heard of international humanitarian law when I went to law school. Today it's taught all over the world. There has been an awakening of the human conscience. And it has come about because people have recognized the stupidity, the plain, ordinary, cruel, genocidal stupidity of the present practice of having young people murder other young people they don't even know 
who may have done them and nobody else any harm. That is so stupid that it's inconceivable to me that it can continue to go on. But the change depends upon the young people. The diplomats and those who are frozen in their thinking are not prepared to change. They do what they think is in the best interest of their own country. And uh, the hope of the United Nations Charter that we the peoples, in order to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, will condemn the illegal use of armed force and will set up a security council to enforce all that with demilitarization and an international military force. None of that has materialized. The hopes have been betrayed and it's time for the young people to speak up and say, we've had enough. Hell no, we won't go. First, let us consider for a moment the current status. The current status is when two heads of state are unable to agree, they send young people like you out to kill other young people like you, uh, and they keep killing each other until they get tired of killing. Then each one declares victory, they pause, and then they start again. That is the current system. And it seemed to me at a very early age this was a terrible thing to do. Uh, so my message to you is that don't give up hope. Uh, I am convinced that the progress has been fantastic. People can change their mind about things which seem ingrained. You cannot kill a, an ingrained ideology with a gun. That's a mistake we are continuing to make every day. And the result of that is counterproductive. And we haven't quite recognized that. So we've got to change our way of thinking to recognize that compromise is not a sign of weakness or cowardice to recognize that tolerance and uh, uh, understanding for another point of view is a necessity and is not something which is to be despised, and uh, to be prepared to think in new ways, as we are doing in so many ways. The emancipation of women, for example, the emancipation of the sexes, for example, the entire landing on the moon, for example. All these things were impossible as I was growing up. They are realities today. And so what is so difficult to say law, not war? You are all law students or lawyers. Law, even if it's a bad decision, is certainly better than the war which you can anticipate from cyberspace. It makes past wars look like child's play. Nuclear weapons are obsolete. Today we can cut off the electrical grid from any city on planet Earth. And when I say we, I don't mean just the United States. The Russians can do it, the Chinese can do it, and uh, I don't know who else can do it. So you live in a very, very dangerous world which requires new thinking, building on the worthwhile precedents of the past, emphasizing, as you are trying to do, international human rights. The enforcement arm has not yet been begun. The plan for the UN Charter has not touched the enforcement arm. So there's a whole area. The stool is now standing on two legs. One was the identification of the laws. Good. We are moving forward pretty well on recognizing the right of the human being. Courts, just beginning. The International Criminal Court has a load of problems, but these are birth pangs. This is a prototype. They will overcome them. I'm not concerned really about that existing. The enforcement arm hasn't begun. You cannot stand on a two-legged stool without falling on your head. And that is the condition of society today. And it's the young people that I look to to change it. Once you've built the third leg on that, we can have a more peaceful world where law, not war, becomes the guiding principle for everyone, regardless of their race or creed, that will protect them, that will enable them to use their money instead of planning to kill a lot of people, to help them, to help the refugees, to help the students, to help the health, the health of the aged. That's the challenge that you face, and uh, a challenge that I faced as well over 70 years ago. And I am quite content with the progress made. And I am optimistic because I see that pro progress. I am not pessimistic. I see all the difficulties, but they can be overcome. If you just use your common sense, it doesn't take more than that. Law, not war. And three final pieces of advice I'd like to give all students. One, never give up. Two, never give up. Three, you got it, never give up. Good luck to you. Bye-bye.